Welcome to AT Save, the emergency medicine channel. Today I will be presenting a case of a 76 year old male, known case of CKD stage 5 on hemodialysis twice weekly, who came to our ER with complaints of uh, generalized muscle weakness and lethargy. On initial 10 second assessment, patient was conscious and oriented, airway was patent, no pooling of secretions, breathing, bilateral breathing movements were equal, air entry was bilaterally equal. Uh, there was bilateral basic repetitions, saturation of 98% on room air with a respiratory rate of 24 per minute. So, coming to circulation, heart rate was 86 per minute uh, regular, BP of 150-90 millimeters of mercury. Yeah, at this point of time, 18 gauge IV cannula was secured and cardiac monitors were attached. Coming to disability, GCS uh, was E4, V5, M6. Pupils are equal and reacting to light, moving all four limbs. GRBS of uh, 182, exposure temperature was normal, uh, patient uh, within, on the cardiac monitor it was showing uh, a wide QRS complex uh, fusing into the T wave. So we took a ECG, 12 lead ECG was taken uh, which showed a sinusoidal pattern and uh, also a VBG was taken uh, which showed pH of uh, 7.102 uh, with a Bicarb of 14.4 uh, and uh, potassium was 8.6. Creatinine was uh, 5.6 and uh, lactate was 2.2. HB 8.4. So this, uh, I mean, uh, though it looks like a metabolic kind of issue, you have to always tell about Manual. the PCO2 also, no? Okay. What about the PCO2? Uh, PCO2 uh, was uh, 42. 42. Mm. Uh, and uh, it's a VBG or? VBG, it was VBG. Okay. And uh, uh, second reserve. Yeah, you will finish the second reserve and we will come back. But at this point, you have to intervene, no? Yeah. So at the end of this, point, you have to intervene. So what intervention you need to do at this uh, point? First, uh, we uh, started, uh, we gave injection uh, IV calcium gluconate, 10% mm -hmm. uh, 10 ml was given mm -hmm. over 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And also, we started uh, corrections uh, for hyperkalemia with uh, GI bolus glucose insulin uh, mm -hmm. with insulin of 8 units mm -hmm. and uh, in 25 percent dextrose 100 ml mm -hmm. and also we started on nebulization salbutamol. Okay. How much? Uh, nebulization salbutamol triple strength was given. That means? Uh, around. Uh, okay, we will come to these, uh, these drugs again. So basically you feel that this is a patient with uh, uh, CKD, CKD. Uh, miss skipping dialysis or? Uh, no. Last dialysis was two days back. Okay. So, there could have been some other kind of a trigger coming with uh, generalized fatigue kind of symptoms on evaluation hemodynamically stable, but a due course was found to have hyperkalemia with uh, worsening of metabolic acidosis. So, we are uh, treating the hyperkalemia up front and we are pro proceeding with the further evaluation. Okay. We will come back to this. Right. Okay. Uh, secondary survey, uh, mm -hmm. 76 years old male who is a known case of CKD stage 5D on two uh, twice uh, weekly dialysis. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the last dialysis was done two days back with uh, type 2 DM hypertension. Now came with complaints of uh, generalized muscle weakness and fatigue since two days. It was uh, insidious onset and progressively it increased over two days. And he also had complaints of uh, paresthesia of uh, both uh, hands and foot since uh, three days. There was uh, worsening of, he has been having it since uh, one month, but there has been worsening since three days. There is no history of uh, breathlessness or uh, chest pain palpitations or altered sensorium or fever. He was not allergic to any medications. Uh, he is on Ecospirin, uh, Atorostatin, uh, Metoprolol, uh, Furosemide 20 mg and Metformin Glimipride. Metformin is there? Metformin Glimipride. Mm. Uh, he is uh, past history, uh, he is a chronic kidney disease stage 5D with type 2 DM and hypertension. Last meal was taken four hours back. Okay, okay. Uh, let's hold here. So, uh, one important thing will be how long he is on dialysis? He has been uh, on dialysis for the past for the past four years. Four years. Okay. Right. So, we have a patient with established kind of uh, CKD on long term dialysis. Now, he has not skipped any dialysis. In spite of that, he has come with that kind of uh, uh, hyperkalemia kind of symptoms, like any infective history is there? No, infective, no history of fever, cough, dysuria or something. Any other uh, history you need to take in such kind of patients where
we are not anticipating any any uh, skipping of dialysis but still he has gone into uh, dietary mm. he has uh, given history of intake of banana okay what else usually diet dietary wise other than uh, bananas water. okay then nuts mm -hmm. potatoes potato hmm? smash potatoes tomato bananas these are usually having high potassium diet kandar no okay so here you feel that there is an excessive dietary intake so yes. in the, any other history is important drug wise uh, drug wise uh, we to look for uh, uh spiral like uh, mm -hmm. potassium sparing diuretics okay or any uh, ac inhibitors arbs okay then digoxin okay digoxin uh, not he is not having any cardiac issues af or anything no no he is not, not on digoxin right no he is not on digoxin. yeah fine mm -hmm. then so that's it right so uh, we are looking for other triggers which would have pushed the patient to hyperkalemia this time including dietary things anything else trauma any history no history of any what's the relevance of trauma in a patient with hyperkalemia trauma history a uh, patient can have a crush injury mm -hmm. or muscle injury causing release of myoglobins okay. and uh, rhabdomyolysis like okay fine uh, other than ckd what are the other situations where you can expect hyperkalemia hyperkalemia uh, initially it can be most common is like factitious hyperkalemia during withdrawal uh, that is pseudo hyperkalemia pseudo hyperkalemia okay, due to tourniquet use or uh, mm -hmm. hemolysis while withdrawing mm -hmm. and uh, or any leukocytosis mm. thrombocytosis and all. Mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, if there is increased uh, potassium load as in uh, dietary intake okay or iv potassium and okay so basically potassium. excessive intake so, yeah. index yeah. the potassium supplements or potassium containing mm -hmm. drugs okay and uh, then uh, there can be transcellular shift mm -hmm. uh, due to acidosis mm -hmm. uh, then beta block beta mm -hmm. blockers mm -hmm. use or insulin deficiency mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is insulin. Uh, then digitalis mm -hmm. intoxication, mm -hmm. hyperkalemic periodic paralysis. Mm -hmm. Then uh, due to reduced renal excretion of. No, oh, again transcellular shift. You have uh, other causes like what is tumor lysis syndrome? Tumor lysis syndrome due to chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. There will be breakage of the cancer cells, releasing potassium. Oh, again, th that is uh, that will form under the heading of transcellular, transcellular shift. shift. Tumor lysis syndrome, hemolysis, hemolysis rhabdomyolysis, rhabdomyolysis. All these things are transcellular. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So you told about dietary intake, transcellular shift. What's the third? Uh, reduced potassium. Reduced uh, excretion. excretion. Oh. As in uh, reduced uh, renal losses due okay. to CKD, Good. renal failure, oh. or uh, due to other. process such as uh, in hypoaldosteronism okay okay so that we have covered the major causes for hyperkalemia right okay after that you can proceed with your case and we will yeah. come back to the examination process. the patient so here we have looked for other additional things and we feel that dietary component would have contributed to the fine okay. on, exa on examination patient is conscious oriented uh, mm -hmm. pallor is present bilateral pitting pearl edema is present uh, there are no ectrus uh, clubbing cyanosis lymphadenopathy Uh, coming to uh, CNS. So you told about pallor. Okay, what's the uh, uh, hemoglobin here? Hemoglobin was uh, hemoglobin eight point eight point six. Okay, in patients with anemia, is there any additional concern? Uh, I mean, in patients with hyperkalemia, is there any additional concern for transfusing BRBC? Uh, when you are large, uh, if uh, if it is a old blood, then oh. they can cause again. potassium okay potassium. it is stored blood will have stored again excessive potassium. excessive potassium so always make sure that you if in fresh. such kind of patients even if there is anemia you will start off with the dialysis and then give as fresh as prbc as possible okay fine continue and uh, coming to cns examination gcs was e4 e5 m6 pupils are equal and reacting to light 2.5 mm bilaterally equal power okay. of 4 <coughs> by 5 in upper limb and lower limb hmm. and uh, chest examination uh, respiratory system so showed only bilateral basal crepitations mm -hmm. were there rest of the system was normal how are you going to explain this tightness weakness and all it can be due to the uh, dyslactylemia okay. hyperkalemia hyperkalemia itself is well known to cause such symptoms no other than that you also found some ecg changes right ECG changes. so what were the ecg what are the typical ecg changes in hyperkalemia initially uh, there will be tall tender t waves uh, mm -hmm. with the qtc prolongation okay around uh, 5.5 to 7.5 around. Okay. There is no evidence to uh, correlate values and hyperkalemia. Okay. okay. So the key uh, thing you need to remember is that absolute values need not always matter. It depends upon what the patient had. If it is a chronic renal failure, say patients with chronic renal failure coming with a potassium of 8, okay. 
and an acute renal failure coming with potassium of 6.5. Whom are you more concerned about? Acute renal failure. Okay. So, it is the rate at which potassium increases which can uh, uh, which can kind of influence the acuity of the patient. Okay. There are uh, reports and textbooks you will find all these numerics kind of thing for ECG changes, but as per evidence there is not much of correlation for that. But of course, there are typical ECG changes which are said to be in hyperkalemia. One as you told, tall tendon kind of T wave. Second thing will be PR prolongation or P wave can be absent or… Absent QRS coagulation. Okay. Mm. And? Then, uh, that is, in this patient you told no sine wave pattern. Sine wave pattern. That is a broadening of QRS complex leading to sine wave pattern. Sine wave pattern. Okay. Fine. So, that is with the ECG thing. Continue. Examination over after that. Uh, then, uh, lab, lab investigations after mm. correction actually, we sent the lab. Mm. So, uh, potassium was around 5.8. With one correction. So, I think this again will, uh, collection problems might have been there, no? Potassium of 8 suddenly going to uh, 5.6 is little unusual. So, definitely uh, that sampling issue might have been there, okay. Uh, fine, continue. Uh, lab values, uh, restore uh, HB of 8.6, then platelet of 1.84, total count 12.5, oh. creatinine was uh, 5.6. Uh, uh, hmm. Calcium 10.65, magnesium 2.5. So, so basically, no other major issues ah, you found. Major, uh, yeah. Evidence suggestive of CKD was there, hmm. and also hyperkalemia was also there, right? That's it, no? Okay. So moving on to the management, we just touched upon it initially. So we are we have a, we have a patient with hyperkalemia with ECG changes. changes. So what is the first drug you have to give? First drug you have to uh, stabilize the membrane potential okay. with uh, calcium. Okay. Chloride or calcium gluconate. Okay. What's the difference between calcium chloride and calcium Calcium gluconate? chloride, uh, actually the elemental calcium and calcium chloride is three times than the mm. calcium gluconate. So that is? So, uh, we it is? Three times means it is? I do. It is 10.6. Okay. It is 10.6 milliequivalents of calcium mm. in uh, calcium chloride compared to 4.2 point, 4 point I believe mm. in calcium gluconate. gluconate. Okay. What we have in our part of the world is calcium, calcium gluconate. gluconate. Okay. So, both doses is got to remain same, right? Okay. So, you are giving the first dose of calcium gluconate. gluconate. What's the dose? 10, ml, 10 to 20 ml, 10 percentage uh, over 10 minutes. Okay. Why is this 10 minutes? Slow. Slow. Uh, Why slow? Why not fast? Yeah. Basically, one thing is regarding the side effect profile. Second thing is regarding the thrombophlebitis and extravasation no, kind of risk. Okay. Fine. So, first dose of calcium gluconate you gave. Then? Uh, then uh, we can, can you repeat calcium gluconate? Yes, we can repeat after okay. because the duration of action around uh, 30 to 50 minutes. Okay. okay. Onset of action? Onset within 1 to 3. Mm. Three, to, 3 to 5 minutes. Yeah. Oh, Fine. Center. So, 3 to 5 minutes onset of action, Maximum duration of action is 20, to 20 minutes to 1 hour. 1 hour. And okay. you can give every 20 <coughs> minutes maximum uh, 4 doses in 1 hour. Provided EC changes remain. Okay. Okay. Fine. Then, then because you are you are giving calcium gluconate need not influence the lab value of calcium. You remember that. You cannot measure hypercalcemia and keep on correcting calcium mm -hmm. gluconate. Okay. okay. Your correction will, if at all you are repeating the dose, it will be based upon the yeah. cardiac manifestations. Yeah. Okay. So, calcium gluconate, you gave the first dose. After that? And then we did uh, corrections for the hyper. So, any, any place where calcium gluconate is, uh, uh, dose or role of calcium gluconate is questionable in a specific situation where hypercalcemia, uh, hyperkalemia might be there. If the uh, patient has uh, digoxin uh, toxicity, in that case, uh, we will have to give it more slowly. Okay. Calcium correction has to be given more slowly. Okay. There, there is something called a stunt heart or stone heart kind of thing, where you, if you give calcium gluconate in uh, digoxin overdose associated hyperkalemia, that is kind of the classical teaching. Of course, there is there is some evidence that it can be given slowly also slowly. over 30 minutes. Fine, perfect. So that is with calcium gluconate or calcium chloride. Okay. Second drug was then we will uh, do the corrections for the hyperkalemia. Mm -hmm. uh, first, we gave the uh, GI bolus. Which okay. Is, what is GI bolus? GI bolus is insulin. Okay. So, uh, you have a soluble uh, insulin, what is the dose? Of, uh, you can give 8 units. 10 units, yeah. 8 to 10, 10 units. units. So yeah, 10 units in? 25 percent dextrose 100 ml. Okay. Uh, over 10 to 20 minutes. Oh, fine. Over 10 to 20 minutes is fine. What, what is the, what are we, what is the drug of our interest? Like is it the insulin, insulin or the glucose? Insulin. Yeah, it's insulin. What does insulin do? Insulin uh, call, uh, activates the uh, sodium potassium ATPase pump and causes 
ഈ ട്രാൻസെല്ലർ ഷിഫ്റ്റ് പൊട്ടാഷ്യം ഓക്കെ സോ ഹിയർ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ ട്രാൻസെല്ലർ ഷിഫ്റ്റ് ഓക്കെ ഫൈൻ സോ ടു മെക്കാനിസംസ് വി ഹാവ് എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ വാട്ട്സ് ദ തേർഡ് ഡ്രഗ് തേർഡ് ഡ്രഗ് വി കാൻ ഗിവ് നെബലൈസേഷൻ സാൽബ്യൂട്ടമോൾ ബീറ്റ അഗോണിസ്റ്റ് ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് ദ ഡോസസ് ഡോസസ് अराउंड 10 ഇറ്റ്സ് 10 ടു 20 10 സോ യൂഷ്വലി വി ഗിവ് 2.5 for your asthma exacerbation yeah, syndrome it is usually 2.5 to 5 here it is 10 to 20 10 to 20 okay fine 10 to 20 mg yeah, yeah. of salbutamol fine yeah. so you give that nebulization first dose given what what is the mechanism of action there that also transcellular shift of potassium okay okay that so three drugs over what's the fourth drug uh, fourth drug uh, we can give uh, binding resins can okay okay can you give some so, examples uh, k bind okay mm-hmm. previously there was sps what is sps sodium polystyrene sulfonate okay, now it is now it is called in necrosis industrial necrosis so they have okay, not much evidence it's questionable only more of like gastric symptoms were uh, uh, bloating and things like that and gastroenteritis kind of issues okay fine uh, then uh, we can give a diuretic so binding resins so binding resins what's the mechanism of action you give it orally and it kind of binds and excretes Bind through the gut so gut excretion is what is expected through the binding resins fine so that is again in acute there is limited role to be very frank so even if uh, with easy changes and all we can start but we are not anticipating a quick kind of an action it is going to take time right okay and what next this patient we plan for hemodialysis okay fine so what is the indication of uh, uh, dialysis in acute hyperkalemia in hyperkalemia it is in refractory hyperkalemia refractory hyperkalemia okay Fine. So once they are not uh, not uh, uh, responding to conventional medical measures is when you go for dialysis in acute hyperkalemia. But here definitely the patient is on maintenance dialysis. Most likely whatever measures we do, he will end up on dialysis yes. only. So mobilizing for dialysis is an important part of management in this patient. Okay. So that is with dialysis. Any other drugs? For discussion sake, uh, you have to di- uh, uh, tell about two more drugs. Uh, loop diuretics, furosemide. Okay. so you know the excretion of if at all the patient has good output then probably yeah. uh, uh, role is there then 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 we can uh, if there is severe acidosis and all we mm-hmm. can give soda sodium mm-hmm. bicarbonate mm-hmm. injections can be given okay. okay. sodium bicarbonate you know, again stand alone there is limited role only limited it's role. always with other other agents in se- when as you told with with severe acidosis probably definitely there is a role for uh, correction of hyperkalemia okay that then, then that's it yeah. okay so you have told about the management aspects of hyperkalemia also and we in, in between we touched about the other causes non renal causes kind of thing no? so there uh, definitely the management principles will also uh, change right you have to treat the underlying cause of what is causing if it is rhabdomyolysis then again the other other supportive management comes in if it is kind of a tissue necrosis kind of thing surgical management will come in if it is tumor lysis kind of syndrome the primary etiology needs to be treated in for hyperkalemia no without that you may not be able to correct the hyperkalemia hmm? uh right i think we have covered covered i mean anything else nothing no? okay right okay. thank you thank you sir